Okay, I think that this one I'll, I'll direct to you first, Ken. Uh, members of several communities calling themselves the Highway 63 Coalition have been involved in trying to gain an improvement in Highway 63 by having 97 miles of it designated as part of the commercial industrial network. If successful, this will result in improving the Highway 63 uh, in Mahaska County and going up to Interstate, out, Interstate 80, uh, possibly making it all into a four-lane road. Would you support this initiative, and do you have any concerns? I absolutely do sort support the initiative. If one looks at the big picture, Highway 63 is what close to 1,300 miles long. The only, the, the worst stretch of that is the 100 miles from Oskaloosa to Waterloo. We all want to talk about economic development, and it seems to me that if that were placed on the CIN network, and if that highway became a reality. It puts Oskaloosa, not only Oskaloosa, but Pella, would be beneficial to Pella, to Montezuma, to New Sharon, and a number of other communities. Um, my fear is in rural Iowa that if we don't have the infrastructure to attract uh, business, we're going to be in the backwater. Uh, we need to capitalize on the synergies that we have with Pella, Montezuma, New Sharon and so forth to make this a reality. Um, I think you asked if I have reservations. I really don't have any other than I told you I'm really, I farm. Roads take out a lot of land and that's always a concern that we put land, productive Iowa farmland under pavement. But uh, reality is that with today's needs for modern safe highways, you, you have to do, of course, some of it. And this, I can't think of a, 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 of a, a more important project probably for this larger community than that project right now. I agree with Ken, we do need to do this project. The road hasn't been updated in decades. I recently went up to Minneapolis, they drove Highway 63 back all the way from Minnesota to Oskaloosa. And yeah, we do have the worst stretch here. There's already parts of the state that have it either in four lane or staked out ready to go to four lane. And so we're, we're already behind. You know, and we keep hearing of four lane from here to I-80. It would also be four lane from here to I-90. They're working on Missouri to make it all the way down to I-70. So it's more than just local traffic. It would bring a lot of traffic in, into the county. It would also help um, with the bypass, direct some of the truck, truck traffic around Oskaloosa instead of having it right downtown. So, yes, I'm definitely in support of the project. Okay, okay Ken, I'll, I'll follow up again off of the same question. The members of the Highway 63 Coalition were informed by James Oberstar, uh, the congressman from Minnesota, uh, that the federal government is really not just interested in funding highways. Instead, the preference is toward multimodal transportation plans that include air and rail and roads. To that end, the Oskaloosa and Pellis City Councils have been encouraged to pursue a regional airport. Would you support the study of a regional airport, and do you have any concerns about that? I'm going to give you another qualified yes. <laughs> I was at a meeting where Leonard Boswell and Jim Oberstar addressed this particular matter. I fully understand the need, or maybe I should say the requirement the federal government would have for funding to, uh, to have intermodal projects. Um, obviously, Pella has a, a need for an airport. They're pursuing that in the Otley area. Uh, if one looks at a map, it's, it's not hard to recognize the uh, how well this would dovetail with the Highway 63 project. Pella needs access to the north and east, better access to the north and east than they have. 
we need the Highway 63 project. Um, so that it makes a lot of sense when you look at it on a map and you put it on paper. I have concerns because, as I mentioned before, putting Iowa farmland under pavement uh, is, is an issue, always an issue with me. And probably greater than that is the fact that some landowners' land will be taken, will be used. And I would support it, but again, I need more details before, and that's why I qualify this, by saying I don't think I have all the details I would need at this point. Um, and I would also stress that it's critical that those landowners that would be affected are properly compensated. Uh, I know these things can be touchy. I know they can be, uh, they can get downright ugly. I understand that. And, and I understand why. So I think that when we're balancing all different interests, we need to consider that as well. Me and Ken seem to be in agreement quite a bit this evening. Um, I understand the, the federal requirements for the airport to go along with the highway and, and you know, the highway is definitely needed. Um, I've had people comment to me that why are we building an airport that would just support one or two businesses? And I don't, you know, um, we need to look at the big picture. You know, they say, well, it's going to help a Marion County business. Well, that Marion County business employs more people in Mahaska County than any other business around, even including the ones in Mahaska County. So there is. I need their, you know, we want to keep that business around and keep them healthy, and we want to be able to bring new businesses in. Since I moved here 12 years ago, there has been almost no economic development that, that I have seen. There's been very few businesses moved to town. You know, local people have opened up a few businesses, but things coming in and bringing employment has just been very sparse, and we need to improve that. But, yeah. Imminent domain is a very touchy subject, um, so I would have to be very convinced of the need and the feasibility and the profitability. You know, if, if we're not going to get a return on an investment and it's not the feasibility doesn't show up, you know, we have to make sure that it is a sound investment for the county. If I call time during a uh, in the middle of a statement, please feel free to finish your statement. <laughs> okay, this question I'm going to start with you, Ken. Okay. There's several other uh, communities in Iowa that are small, and they have 2080 agreements with their county board of supervisors, with the county engineer. I know it's been talked about between the mayors of the smaller communities because we don't have the resources to support our infrastructure. It's been brought forth to the County Board of Supervisors here in Madison County before that we would like to enter into 2080 agreements with the county and it was shot down. Uh, what's your feelings on that? George, back to my uh, definition of community. Those 2080 agreements are, are certainly a natural follow-up to my idea of community. Um, if we can work together, meaning the county, Oskaloosa, smaller communities, University Park, on providing fundamental, basic government services, and we can do that by working together uh, so that we can do it more efficiently, more effectively, we, we uh, we better be doing it. So I, I uh, you know, I'm pretty familiar with New Sharon. My wife went to school there. I grew up near Fremont. I've traveled through University Park 14,000 times probably. Um, I have a great interest in working with all of those communities. I don't know how all those, how will that be worked out. I figure that's my job, to figure out how those things work out and where there's where there's obvious ways to work together, uh, we need to be doing it. 
and I would definitely uh, pursue any of those uh, opportunities I could. Yeah, the, one of the things I've heard is when I've been walking around all the, the smaller communities is, you know, they they kind of feel abandoned by the county. Um, they haven't seen a lot of attention, and they would like to work better with the county. So that would definitely be a natural progression is to get in there. I did talk to the, the county engineer, and he said, the state gives the county for cities less than 500 people, they get $5,000 a year from the state for, for road maintenance. So that doesn't go very far. So that's one of the reasons we need to have the county and the cities work better together to make better use of our resources. Okay, Reg, I'm going to shoot this one at you. Okay. Most of our councils are made up of five people or more. And you both say you serve on many boards. How many of those boards have three people? Probably none. When three to four people, okay. It is a concern of the mayors and, and all the communities that we would like to see the county board of supervisors moved up to five or more so that we have a more fair vote. What's your thoughts on that? Actually, that is not one I've considered yet. Um, it, I can see see the reasoning behind it because if you get, you know, a, a small minority that just actually only need two people, then you can pretty much put a stalemate to anything, and it would definitely limit the ability to get things done. The, I guess the downside would be the extra expense to the, the county to pay for, you know, employees because it's more than just the salary, but the health insurance and everything else that goes with having an employee is, is a lot more than, than what you just see for a paycheck. But it's definitely something I would be open to discussing and um, seeing if it would be a benefit. Yeah, I've thought about this about as much as Reg has, never entered my mind. <laughs> uh, I am aware that some of the counties in Iowa that have probably most of those that have larger populations have five and maybe more, I don't know. I don't know of any more than five. Um, I'm not sh yeah, you, you, you start adding people, you start adding cost. Uh, I would have to, I'd have to look long and hard at that, I'm not prepared to really give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to that at this point. Um, I would say it means that it's pretty important who you elect as supervisor. Um, I do think that we tend to relate the office or the, the, the supervisor seats with rural uh, residents more than city and maybe that's a perception that has to be challenged and addressed a little bit um, and we've talked about that with the 2080 agreements or we talk about communication and so forth. Um, so yeah, I, I'd have to study that one long and hard. Uh, I wouldn't close the door on it, but I'm not ready to embrace it yet either. So I have to think things through before I'm ready to say something. 